the objective of this paper discussion videos is to make sure that those who are planning for the upcoming entrances they get familiarized with the type of questions the range of questions which were asked in the recently concluded NEET MDS 2021 exam and also heads up to those who are preparing for the upcoming entrance we are launching a new batch mission 12 batch starting from january 2021 you can drop a mail at proud to be dentist at gmail.com for more details or log into our website ptbdacademy.com hi hope you guys are all doing good so after the exam I know you must be wondering what you should be doing. Anyways, we'll have our paper discussion videos, but I don't want you to feel tensed or worried about the answers or the key. It doesn't matter anymore. You've done your best. Now it's time for you to chill and relax. And if you're willing to learn, and if you have that orientation to learn and expand your boundaries, of course, you're more than welcome to watch these paper discussion videos. And before I proceed, I have something important to share. See, uh, you had gone through this exam experience and by now you might have realized that it's all about learning which ultimately matters, even on the day of exam. That's what we have been trying to highlight right from the beginning. It's not about cramming up some set of MCQs from a particular book uh, and memorizing the answers without understanding the concepts or without that clinical orientation they don't serve any purpose in fact i've heard some of the students saying that we revised a particular book seven times ten times i mean what's the point if cramming up mcqs is the only objective i mean if memorizing things is the only objective then what's the point in preparing what's the point in trying to lay a stronger foundation do you think this preparation perspective will enable you to build up a stronger foundation towards your post graduation and rest of your professional career not at all so right from the beginning as we have been insisting it's the standard references which make all the difference so in fact we designed our courses in line with these standard references and it's not just about practicing mcqs from a particular guide or from a particular source it's about learning from each and every source each and every video each and every mcq each and every key point for that matter so what really matters at the end of the day is what you are learning isn't it The objective of practicing MCQs is always to make sure that you are learning something from that particular question and then referring standard literature in a retrograde process of preparation. Rather, if you are with an expectation that these questions will be coming in the next year's entrance or the upcoming entrance, it doesn't happen always that way. So all you need to focus is learning learning from various resources most importantly learning from standard resources and that's what we have been trying to work on right from the beginning of our journey e-classes test series study club discussions assignments all of them are based on standard references only And it's surprising to see that the question paper is same to everyone but i've been getting diverse responses some of you are saying it's very easy some of you are saying it's very tough some of you are saying it's average in fact most of you said it's average as per the poll where more than thousand participants took part so it's very surprising to look at this diversity i mean that's the beauty of diversity it's the same question paper but different responses depending upon your perspectives depending upon your preparation process as such anyways those who are planning for the upcoming entrances and even for those who have uh, completed their exam and are now looking forward towards post graduation admission remember learning is all about enjoying the process learning is all about understanding the concepts and applying the same clinically because that's what ultimately matters you're going to practice you're going to teach so it's all about understanding the concepts and most importantly enjoying what you're doing i mean if there is no joy in the process 
then there is no point in doing the same don't you think so so wish you all the best love you all and welcome to our paper discussion video series hi again hope you guys are ready so in this paper discussion video series we'll discuss various topics covered in the latest neat mds 2021 entrance right so based on the keywords which you provided and one of the main objectives of this session is to make sure that those who are preparing for the upcoming entrance they'll have an idea regarding the topics covered and also those who have given the exam they'll have an idea regarding the key and relevant explanation part and as i said learning never stops i hope you guys are all ready so let's start writing so there seems to be a question on immunoglobulins immunoglobulins as in saliva so you can find various types of immunoglobulins their characteristics and the distribution in body so some additional information for your benefit so various functions of antibodies iga it plays a role in localized defense mechanism in external secretions like tear saliva etc IgD is involved in recognition of antigen by B lymphocytes. IgE, as you know, it's involved in allergic reactions. IgG is responsible for complement fixation. IgM is also responsible for complement fixation. In fact, we discussed various antibodies and their relevant functions in the form of several MCQs in e-classes as well as in YouTube. So in specific, there seems to be a question on IgA. So IgA is abundant in serum, nasal mucus, saliva, breast milk, Intestinal fluid accounting for 10 to 15 percent of human immunoglobulins, and IgA forms dimers that is, two IgA monomers joined together. And IgA in breast milk protects the GIT of neonates from pathogens, right? So, this is some relevant information regarding this topic. If you need any specific information, you know the protocol, right? Just drop a comment. We'll try to update latest relevant information in the description part of these respective videos. Right? So now let's move on to the next topic. So there seems to be a question on IDA membership. So I got some keywords like a foreign dentist planning to join IDA. So which kind of membership? So uh, let me briefly give you some relevant information regarding IDA. As you know, Indian Dental Association was formed in 1946 and was registered in Delhi in 1967, before which it was called as All India Dental Association. Founding father, as you know, Dr. Rafiuddin Ahmad and the current president is Dr. Ravinder Singh and Honorable Secretary General currently, Dr. Ashok Dogle. And we have different types of memberships, as you can see, honorary, a life, annual student, affiliate, defense. So when we were students, and I'm sure most of your students are also student IDA members. So honorary members, a person with bright scholastic career and with valuable service, a record towards the society has been nominated by a central council of IDA. So they fall under this category, honorary. So they're given honorary membership. Life members, life membership can be achieved through lifetime registration. You can check out their website and annual members, annual membership can be achieved through yearly registration. Student members, any undergraduate from institutions recognized by Dental Council of India. Affiliate members, any overseas dental professional affiliate members right and then different section members of dental corps either as an annual or as a life member they will be counted as a different section and come under the idea head office on retirement they have the option to join either state or local branch and currently when i browse through the website there are around seventy-five thousand registered dental person throughout the country in idea okay so this is some relevant information i hope it's helpful now let's move on to the next topic. There seems to be a case-based question and the only keyword which I received is HPA1C. So let's uh, look into its significance and then you let me know if you need any additional information. So glycated hemoglobin. So why this glycated hemoglobin? I'm sure you all know. So glycated hemoglobin provides an accurate and objective measure of glycemic control over a period of weeks to months, usually three months, right? Lifespan of RBC. So the non-enzymatic covalent attachment of glucose to hemoglobin glycation, as given in Davidson, increases the amount in the HbA1c fraction related to non-glycated adult hemoglobin. And the rate of formation of HbA1c is directly proportional to blood glucose concentration. And this is very, very important. A rise of 1% in HbA1c corresponds to an increase of 2 millimoles per liter or 36 milligrams per deciliter of blood glucose. 
HbA1c concentration reflects blood glucose or erythrocyte lifespan as we just discussed around 120 days. It is most sensitive to glycemic control in the past month and to enable international comparisons, additional information, uh, you can refer David's, okay? And also, HbA1c estimates may be erroneously diminished in anemia and pregnancy and may be difficult to interpret in uremia and hemoglobinopathy, some exceptions. And according to WHO guidelines, consider this very, very important. So we have a criteria as you can see in the table here. So WHO guidelines also include HbA1c of more than 48 millimoles per uh, mole as diagnostic of uh, diabetes, right? So as you can see in this particular table and also the illustration. I hope this information is useful. Now, let's move on to the next topic. Drug of choice, acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. So this is uh, some information from Caranza. So Loche et al. described the predominant constant flora and a variable flora associated with NUT. The constant flora includes Trevotella intermedia, in addition to Fusobacterium, Treponema, and Selenomonas species. The variable flora consists of heterogeneous array of bacterial types. And as you can see on the slide, treatment with metronidazole results in significant reduction of Treponema species. Trevotella intermedia and Fusobacterium with resolution of clinical symptoms. So the antibacterial spectrum of this drug provides evidence for anaerobic members of flora as etiologic agents. I hope it's clear. Okay, now uh, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, most common salivary gland tumor, pleomorphic adenoma, as mentioned in Schaeffer's. Okay, so you can see the table, the WHO 1991 classification, histologic classification of various salivary gland tumors, and pleomorphic adenoma is the most common salivary gland tumor. Okay, now let's move on to the next topic. Extraoral projections. So I got a keyword like zygomatic arch, which is not visible, it's not very clear, but let me briefly review information uh, regarding various external projections and what structures you can uh, actually see in those projections. So carefully observe this illustration, the second one. So extreme left starting from lateral self, uh, submental vertex, water view, paranasal sinus view, PSF and then reverse down. So let's review some information as given in white and fab. So lateral skull projection used for studying craniofacial morphology helps us in assessing relationship of oral and facial structures, which you're all familiar with. So you can see zygomatic arch as well. PS skull projection for evaluation of facial asymmetries and for assessment of orthognathic surgery outcomes involving patients midline or mandibular maxillary relationship. Also, zygomatic arch is visible, but submental vertex view is in specific indicated for visualizing these zygomatic arch fractures, you know, jug handle view when you decrease exposure by one third, you know, all that story, right? So submental vertex view, underexposed zygomatic arches, jug handle view. And then paranasal sinus view, waters view, as you can see. So evaluating sinuses, also zygomatic arch can be seen in paranasal sinus view. And then reverse tongue projection, open mouth for mainly for visualization of condyles, neck of condyles, right? So this is some information. I hope this is helpful in answering the question. Okay, and now let's move on to the next topic, bone densities, uh, so anterior maxilla, that was a keyword which I received, so based on literature review, bone can be classified into four types, depending upon density, as you can see, D1, D2, D3, and D4. D1 is dense compact bone, D2 porous compact bone, D3 coarse trabecular bone, D4 fine trabecular bone, as it presented by this uh, schematic illustration. So D1, anterior regions of mandible and lateral aspect of symphysis of a mandible. And D2, anterior portion of mandible followed by posterior mandible. D3, anterior or posterior maxilla and posterior regions of mandible. D4, in long-term edentulous patients found in posterior maxilla. Right? Some relevant information regarding this topic of question. Now let's move on to the next topic. So this is something which you already discussed in e-classes as well as in YouTube. Loss of access opening, Krasner, Rancor. So we have various laws and you can see in the law of symmetry one and symmetry two, except for maxillary molars. So these laws don't apply. Uh, these uh, laws of symmetry don't apply for maxillary molars, as you can see in the illustration at the bottom of this uh, slide, right? So consider this topic very, very important. Now, let's move on to the next topic, gubernacular canals. As you can see on the alder crest behind the incisors, 
methyl and mandibule. So these are gubernacular canals. And what is their significance? So first of all, gubernacular cord is an original structure of dental lamina. This structure is located within the gubernacular canal, which can be identified as a small opening in the alveolar region of lingual or palatal surface of deciduous teeth, as you can see in these respective illustrations. Okay. Right. Now let's move on to the next topic. Again, there seems to be an image-based question, muscle histology. I think uh, there was a similar question or question along the same lines even in previous entrance as well. I said, if I'm not wrong. So you can see skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, smooth muscle. I reckon smooth muscle was given based on the inputs which you provided. So smooth muscle fibers are fusiform or elongated as you can see. These fibers are generally very small, measuring 2 to 5 microns in diameter, 50 to 20 microns in length. Please don't bother. Nucleus is single and elongated and it is centrally placed. Normally, two or more nucleoli are present in the nucleus. Right? So these are some of the topics which I wanted to highlight in this first part of paper discussion video series of NEET and this 2021. I hope the information provided is useful. And also, as you know the protocol, you need any further information, any elaborate information, any clarification, just drop a comment right beneath this video and give me at least 24 to 48 hours. Give us at least 24 to 48 hours so that we can update relevant information in the description part of the video for your benefit. Okay? So keep smiling, enjoy your free time, and check out the list of general books which I have posted in the recently concluded paper analysis video and make maximum use of your time. No, till now it was all preparation but try to explore other experiences as well because life ultimately is all about accumulation of as many wonderful amazing fantastic experiences as possible isn't it so wish you all the best love you all